Welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my desk and creative workspace setup for 2024. Now, it's not your typical classic techie setup. So if you want tech, this is probably not the place to be. This is more about making a functional space that I can use both for living and creating because I don't have a huge amount of space. I've typically had my desk set up in my spare room next door uh, in the full sort of tech zone. However, I just didn't get on with it. It didn't spark that creativity and inspiration that I needed. And I always found myself coming out here into my big open plan living space where I really found my mojo. Uh, but I wasn't always set up for it. And I typically find myself sat on the sofa with my laptop. So it wasn't absolutely ideal. And then I ended up with things everywhere and it just wasn't that seamless. So it got me to thinking of this setup that is quite multifunctional, uh, but it's working really, really well. Uh, so I thought I would finally share it with you and hope that it gives you a little bit of inspiration for a setup too, especially if you only have space for something that you can use for different purposes. So without further ado, let me get into it. Now, this video is going to be split up into two main parts. Setup number one, which is my kind of day-to-day -day setup that I use for editing and editing my photos and videos and just generally doing creative bits and pieces. And setup number two, which is my YouTube setup for shots and A-roll like this. I've made it quite seamless so that I can switch between the two quite nice and easily. Also, a little bonus for this video, it's that I have something to give away. I'm going to be giving away one of the items in my setup. It's very exciting that I am able to do that. It's the first time that I've been in a position to be able to do this. So I can't wait to do that. All you need to do is stick around to the end of the video and I will let you know how you can enter to win said item. Now, first things first, the main centerpiece of this setup, which is the table itself. It features in both of my setups and I absolutely love it. I've always wanted a rustic kind of industrial wooden and iron legged table. I finally found a company called Master Plank UK who allow you to customize the size and the kind of style and color of the wood. So I used them to make this for me. I got an 80 by 80 centimeter square table with two matching benches. It's not massive by any stretch of the imagination, but it works perfectly for my needs. I can get four people around it for dinner if I need to. And typically when it's set up in the corner over there, which is where I do most of my day to day bits and pieces. And if I'm having dinner and things, the benches tuck away. It's super compact, really nice. And it blends in with the aesthetic of my living area really nicely. I love the wooden texture on the top. It's very rustic and it enables me to take really nice kind of product shots, pictures of my coffee cups, some of my thumbnails uh, on a day-to-day -day basis without having too much of a paraphernalia of setting things up. Just really, really nice, really enjoy sitting at this table and I hadn't quite appreciated how nice it is to have a good solid table that you actually enjoy sitting at. So on top of that, I have put a desk mat just to protect the table a little bit and to keep my tech on something nice and soft. So I went with this light gray felt mat from Amazon. It's by a company called uh, Wolvend, I think is how you would pronounce it. Um, perfect size for the desk, it nearly goes to the edges and it just keeps things nice and protected. And I think that my tech, which is mostly black apart from my laptop, pops off it really nicely. So if I'm getting a photo of it, it looks pretty cool. Two, sitting on top of that is my MacBook Pro. I'm not gonna get into specs and techs of any of my accessories and tech bits, but pretty much is the M1 chip, which I've had for a few years now. I absolutely love it. It's really seamless. I don't tend to have any problems with it. I guess at some point I might need to upgrade, um, but it works really well with DaVinci Resolve, which I edit my videos on, and Lightroom uh, Mobile and Classic, which I edit my pictures on. I do have to accompany this with a, a SSD drive because I found with now recording in 4K and bigger files for video, my computer's just getting a little overwhelmed. I didn't buy it with a huge amount of memory at the time because I didn't realize I was gonna be making lots of videos like this. Perhaps in the future, I would upgrade to bigger memory, but it's quite expensive, Apple. So I go with this SanDisk, really tiny, little cute, rugged drive does the job really nicely and I don't find any particular lag and I can easily pop that into my bag um, and I have a nice fast USB-C cable with it. By the way, I will link everything in the description down below if you want to go and check it out. My other accessory that I use with my MacBook is this card reader and card storage holder by PGY Tech. It's called the CreateMate. I've actually made a video about it before. Love it. Super fast at uploading uh 
footage and photos and really goes in your bag nicely nice and rugged the video is up here if you want to watch all the detail about that but typically that's sitting on my desk because I'm always uploading stuff if not it's in my camera bag so it comes everywhere with me uh, on the other side, I have my mouse. I've had the Logitech MX Master for the Mac for years now. It's in fact got even little grooves and indents where my fingers have spent such a long time on this mouse. Probably not the prettiest, I guess, but really functional. I love all the customizable buttons, which are great for photo editing and especially video editing because you can scroll through your timeline. You can have shortcut keys set up on it really easy um, and it just works really really good mouse i think you'll find a lot of people use it but it's got a good reputation for a reason and finally this whole kind of setup on the desk is powered by a ugreen uh, 60 watt power brick which is plugged into the wall over there and that uh, powers my macbook pro with the power cable that comes with it as well as um, usually got usb-c coming out of it to charge camera drone ipads phone whatever it may be there's always something on the go 60 watts gives you that high fast charging which is really nice and i like the way they designed the brick because it folds in on itself so you, you want to take it traveling and stuff super compact you can just chuck it in your bag it has two usb-c outputs and a usb-a as well so it covers all of your needs and I think that pretty much summarizes my my main setup as I said I love sitting here and just working away I can sit this way or the other way and look out the window if I want to I've got my benches I've got a little stool as well and I just really like it I'm really really enjoying feeling creative in this space now on to setup number two. All I have to do for this is drag the table from that corner over there into the middle of the room. I don't typically sit in the middle of the room when I'm editing photos and things, but for my YouTube setup, which I'm just about to talk about, is absolutely perfect. And I wanted to create that seamless transition between the two because I was finding if I had to go to a huge amount of effort to move things around, rearrange my whole house, I was not typically, typically making videos and getting those ideas out of my brain into the camera quick enough and they just kind of went by the wayside because it was all too much trouble so by being able to drag the table over here with one of my benches and all of them i have to do is set up a couple of lights and my audio setup and i'm good to go so firstly let me start with my lighting all of my lights are made by a company called newer who you can typically buy off amazon they're a slightly cheaper more budget friendly setup but they do the job really nicely for me my main key light which is off to my left here is a newer sl60w and it has a massive soft box on it. it has a 90 centimeter soft box on a newer really heavy duty stand i've had this for years not the easiest thing to get up and down so i actually leave it up in my lounge as a bit of a feature light it's actually quite useful sometimes um, and i keep it on a really low power because it's pretty bright but it does a nice job as my main key light i've recently added an addition of a little bit of a fill light off to my right here here and I'm just using a panel light again by newer which is actually on a stand by Ulanzi it's a really lightweight um, light stand and I found it's also useful for mounting my action cam on as a bit of a pole and a bit of a thing to set up for my behind the scenes photos as well I love having something that's dual purpose really nice and compact so I think that adds a little bit of extra light which I quite like to my right here and sometimes when it's dark and I'm recording at night I will add another panel light on my sofa behind me just to fill the background a little bit I do have to be a bit careful when I'm filming in the daytime it's actually quite a good day today because it's just a great a gray day behind me but if it's very very bright you get way too much contrast and changing light scenes and sources in here so I just have to pick a day when it's overcast which is actually it's not too difficult here in the UK so that's my lighting setup it's nothing too fancy but it works secondly and my most recent addition to this setup is my audio now I was looking to upgrade my audio for the longest time because I knew that it was probably the thing that was letting me down on my setup just a bit because this room is very echoey and I had to do quite a lot in post-production to try and tweak it. But by getting myself a podcasting style mic, I think it's really changed things quite dramatically. And I've had a couple of comments, so thank you for those. Now, at this time, I was just about to pull the trigger on it when actually Joby reached out to me, which is very exciting because it's kind of one of the first people that really reached out and offered to send me something out to try. So they offered to send me one of their mics and I chose the Wavo Pod, which is their podcasting style mic. And they also very kindly sent me out this boom arm. Now, I'd just like to say they didn't pay me to make this video or pay me any money. They just sent me the product to try. I'm really, really happy with it. I absolutely love it. And I am really appreciating the better sound quality and I have to do less with it in post-production as well. Now, 
I'm a little bit undecided whether I like the boom arm. It's nice because it keeps everything kind of nice and tidy. I've got my 3.5 millimeter jack cable, which goes straight into my camera over there. That's by Ugreen uh, and the power cable, which I've just got plugged into my laptop here. I've got it plugged directly into the camera because I don't want to sync in post-production, bit lazy like that, but it keeps everything really nice and tidy and it keeps the mic nice and close to my mouth. But I did quite like it on its little stand, which you can stand on the table, which I have tried out in a couple of videos. So I might bounce around the two to see which I prefer best. But at the moment, I'm going for the better sound quality. Let me know what you think. Um, but so far, so good. And I really, I really am enjoying, as I say, the better audio quality. And last but not least, all that is left to mention is, of course, the camera that I'm recording this whole thing on, which is my Sony a7C Mark II with my 16 to 35 millimetre f4 power zoom lens. On the front of that lens, I have just started using a black mist filter, a quarter strength by a company called Earth. I picked it up off of Amazon. Not majorly expensive, but I'm really enjoying the image that it gives out of it. I think the quality is pretty good. I haven't noticed any degradation in it. And it gives you that, those, that nice kind of bloom in the highlights when I've got lights on behind me. It just smooths out the footage uh, and the image a little bit. And I'm quite enjoying the look of that. My camera is sitting on top of my Ulanzi Zero Y carbon tripod. This is my only tripod that I have and I actually use it for my travels and everything like that, but it works just fine for this kind of setup. It just sits nicely on top of that. And that is pretty much it. It gives me this nice A-roll setup. I can switch things around and go in different directions, but so far I'm quite enjoying this one. And I think this is the best I've got it so far in this apartment that I'm living in at the moment. Definitely a long way to go to get to it, it to it perfection, but in terms of audio and light and just how it all looks, I think it's the happiest I've got it. But let me know what you think below. And if you've made it this far, congratulations. I can now tell you how you can actually win yourself one of these microphones. Joby very kindly, as they sent me one out, said that I was able to give one away to you. So if you just drop a comment down below, anybody that comments will go into the draw to win a Joby microphone and we can contact you and let you know if you are the lucky winner. I hope you do win and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.